What's up guys and gals and welcome to BB Vibes where I love talking all things NFTs, speculation, and of course the market. So admittedly, um, I think it's important for me, at least as a content creator, to let you guys know times that I obviously did really, really well or when I get a price prediction right or whatever it is, but also times that I feel like I've slipped up. Um, for the most part, I've done videos like that in the past. And during the month of June, there were a handful of NFTs that honestly, I just completely overlooked. Uh, some that I didn't put enough money in, some I put absolutely no money in when I probably should have uh, at some point. And some of these NFTs I didn't completely overlook. Some of them I knew were gonna do well, but I should have either entered, you know, I either sold it too soon or I should have bought a little bit earlier, whatever it is, but we'll go over them here in a little bit. So mainly wanted to do this video to help you guys out, not make the same mistakes, or if you guys are a bit hesitant, um, in my opinion, I, I, I say stick to your gut. Uh, I feel like you're gonna feel infinitely better when you stick to your gut and do something than when you kind of hesitate and something you know ends up 2Xing or starts doing really, really well and you hesitated. I think you're gonna beat yourself up more over that than making a move that you're confident in and just didn't happen to work out. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. So again, I have five NFTs. I think I have three collectibles and two comics that uh, I probably should have done a better job positioning myself uh, investing wise as well as collecting wise. So the first one is actually the Rewind Collective Heart. So admittedly, I even said this the, the day or two before the drop. I'm like, look, I don't really have much interest in collecting any of the kind of like uh, pride NFTs that dropped that day. I'm merely going to try and win one and just flip it. I, I openly admitted that this is just merely a way to, to make some gems. And when the tweets started coming out that it looked nothing like it i saw the price start really just nose diving um going all the way down to like i think 60 gems at one point as we can see here the listings are looking pretty high and then shortly afterward i think i mean vivi kind of fixed it within a day right they put out the tweet and they said hey we're gonna fix everything the way it looked like in the promotional you know video and all that stuff that we initially put out we apologize but everything is fixed i saw that tweet minute one when it came out and actually i already had the vivi app open i had very easy access to the rewind collective heart and I probably, if I really wanted to, I probably could have bought two or three that were below 70 gems. You know, 70 gems, maybe 75 in case people were reserving them. And I kind of wish I did that because I knew the price would run up at, you know, pretty quickly, but I wasn't sure how high it would go. I'm like, all right, I don't want to buy these at 65 or 70 and they only go up to like maybe 80 and now I'm kind of stuck holding it. Uh, but they ended up running to a little bit higher than they were there before. So I had 100, almost 110 at one point. So just my hesitation there. And again, I knew I was just going to flip these. I'm like, look, I could have bought these and flipped them relatively quickly, especially since all this stuff happened uh, probably within about 12 hours or so. So that's one thing I did kind of overlook. I know it's a small nuance, but some of these later NFTs, I, I completely overlooked. Um, this next one is the Loki FA. And I said this before in, in my thing. I said the Loki FA, um, the Odin, as well as the Beta Ray Bill are going to be the winners of the um, this like Thor Marvel Mighties. So I actually ended up not doing well at all in the drop. I got seven NFTs or seven on drop. I got four commons and three uncommons. So all of them were about below box price initially. Um, I did buy one Loki because I wasn't sure if one of the commons I got was a Loki because I was quick gating for the most part. Well, eventually what I did was I, I won two Lokis and I actually bought one, I think all for around 13, 14 gems. And I sold them, I sold all three of them for about 20 gems. Right now it's running up to about 28 right now. So that's one thing is, all right, did I sell a little bit too soon? Whatever it was. So in the short term, of course, I did make some profit. Um, I do think this thing will retrace quite a bit, especially as we get closer to San Diego Comic-Con or if we do get um, the first appearance of Thor or Spider-Man, Amazing Fantasy 15 uh, announced. So I'm not too worried about this one because I don't think it's run away so far to the point where I can't like get it again. But that that is one I, I kind of wish I, I bought a little bit more sooner because I did have the availability to buy them when they were like below box price uh, for a little bit, like below 13, 14 gems. But again, I just hesitated. So I had a plan going in, but I didn't really stick to it uh, when it came to things like Loki. And the next one is Odin as well. Same thing here. Uh, they, I, I had plenty of opportunities to buy this below 50. I knew in my mind, I'm like, this thing is way too cheap to be below 50. And sure enough, it was at it was below 50. And my game plan was, all right, I'm not going to buy any of the Marvel Mighties. I might buy one of the Lokis before the pride drop because I felt like the Marvel Mighties, the Thor Marvel Mighties would actually drop lower. Like it would keep going down before the pride drop. So people were trying to save gems in order to go for the drop. And if people did win the pride drop, they would then sell it and then go back, you know, kind of double back and then buy the Marvel Mighties. That was not the case. These things shot up pretty quickly. I mean, Odin went all the way up to 70 gems, retraced down to like the low 60s and then shot right back up. And right now it's settling about 75 gems for the most part. So just kind of misjudged this one. I really thought that, and honestly, I, I knew these were going to do well. I mean, Odin is still, in my opinion, the best looking Marvel Mighty that we have in the set. Maybe, you know, it's 
maybe second to Spider-Man 2099, but I still think this looks a little bit better. Uh, and Spider-Man 2099 is the number two, um, in my opinion. So again, I just kind of misjudged this. As you can see, there is a huge amount of people that bought this. There was 239 listings uh, initially, then it went all the way down to 166. So someone either came in and swept 60 or 70 listings over the course of about six hours or so, a little bit less than that. So these performed a little bit better than I thought. I just thought I would be able to get that lower price for all the way up into the pride drop, but I noticed the price was going up and up and up. I even doubled back and looked at the prices of these after pride. They were still pretty high. So I, again, I kind of just let this go. The next one are the comic books. So a lot of the other, um, some of the other comic book content creators said this was going to be, be a big deal. This is the first appearance um, of Kamala, Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel. Um, and for some strange reason, like the common, uncommon, and like the rare and all that stuff aren't performing too well, but the secret rare is like doing extraordinarily well. And this is actually a drop. I think I just avoided altogether. I didn't even bother going for the drop. Actually, I take that back. I did a couple. I could have gone for more, but I think I just ended up buying like one on each of my phones. And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm not going to go really too hard on this comic, but it's actually doing, um, pretty well especially if you ended up winning you know the ultra rare or the seeker rare or the rare uh, even the common and uncommon are priced a bit, a bit higher than some of the other comics that we've had uh, even now some of the commons that we have for some of the more recent comics are still going for like two gems less than three gems and this one's actually pushing almost five gems at this point so uh, there's a lot of speculation I, I guess me just personally I'm not too keen on speculation books for the most part um, every, everyone that knows me knows I'm not a huge fan of kind of uh, Hollywood and writers, I don't think they're capable enough to actually like flesh out unique characters and make them intriguing and interesting in the MCU or any of the shows. I do feel like a lot of the MC MCU shows are very formulaic and boring and just kind of, you know, it's like, it's cool to see some of this stuff and kind of un understand some of their story, but it's, it's still just not enough. It just seems like a lot of the MCU is, it, it's, it's a lot of, uh, not a lot of carrot and just a whole lot of stick. And you're just waiting for the carrot for three, four, five, six, seven years from now to when the final big baddie comes along, you know, Thanos style. So I don't know that that's kind of a whole side tangent, but yeah, this is one I definitely overlooked. I kind of wish I bought more of, cause I do think these are going to do well in the future. And I think this is the most egregious one that I've ever overlooked. Um, you know, more recently, at least just in the month of June for the most part and is Spider-Man number one. Uh, uh, to be honest, I, um, didn't I, I watched I think Comic and Crypto's video on it? They said hot but I looked at the CGC pricing and it was like a, a nine point whatever was barely going for a hundred dollars. I'm like, you know, what? I'm just gonna skip this, and I completely skipped this drop. But little did I know, you know, I, I guess it's more of a if you're a comic book um, enthusiast, you would know that like even though this this comic isn't worth a lot in real life, it's extremely extremely popular uh, just because it's a Todd McFarlane cover. It's a good looking um, art piece, obviously. And this thing has sold over 2 million copies. And then I think that record was broken by another comic that came out like a few months later, like a year later. I don't remember which one exactly, but this is one I definitely overlooked. And you can even see here, I think a lot of people slept on this comic, like this thing. Um, I kind of wish this graph would stop uh, <laughs> wigging out on me like this. But I, I remember for a while, like this thing was going for a below box price for a good six, seven hours after the drop. So people could have accumulated a ton of these and this thing did run all the way up to 13 gems. And even right now it's sitting at 10. So, I mean, that could have been a very easy, you know, you buy a lot of these at five, six, five, six gems, you flip it, make a nice three, four gem profit on, on each uh, common comic. And that's just the comments. I think the, the, the uncommon rare, ultra rare, secret rare, I think it ran all the way up to like 650 at one point. So to be quite honest, this is one I completely, completely overlooked. And I should have asked the you know, some of my friends and some of my other fellow comic book content creators like, hey, like, is this a good comic book or whatever? Now I'm doing that with most comics now to make sure this kind of doesn't happen again. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for, for the month of June. So these are all comics or these are all collectibles that I either overlooked, maybe sold a bit too soon. I should have invested a little bit earlier. So again, I'm just trying to take all this stuff and learn from it. I know we're in crazy times with MTL right, right around the corner and you know, possibly master collector program and KYC and all these different things that are happening right now. So market is acting uh, a bit wonky right now. So I think that's why I hesitated on quite a few things, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys take care. Please double and triple check all of your listings so you don't screw yourself over and I'll catch you guys next time.